The federal government of Nigeria has set up a coronavirus interministerial multi-sectorial preparedness and response committee to plan and come up with strategies for the prevention of importation of the virus into the country. The committee is also expected to put in place an action plan for joint response in the event that importation does occur to ensure its containment. The Minister of Health made this known in Abuja while briefing the press on the level of Nigeria's preparedness for the emergency situation recently. He said in view of WHO's declaration of the virus as a global public health emergency, there is a need for collaborative, inclusive, coordinated and increased surveillance and response system activation. Joining us now in the studio is Dr. Uche Okorocha, Health Management Consultant. Thank you very much for your time on the news. Thank you, Felicity. My pleasure to be here. All right. Um, the WHO has declared coronavirus a global um, health emergency. Where are we as a nation? Are we safe? Um, so what I can tell you is that as of today, as we speak, uh, there is no confirmed case of coronavirus anywhere in Nigeria. Uh, but now if you want to know, is it a risk to us as a people, I've just asked that you think about the amount of interaction we have with China. Um, from businessmen who go to buy and come back to sell, to people who go to manufacture things, to massive organizations that have a strong Chinese presence in Nigeria. To that extent, I would say uh, there's a potential risk that uh, could be troubling if there should be an outbreak here. But what's your take on the uh, directive that was given uh, by the Ministry of Health to the uh, Chinese community, um, urging them, whoever comes in, to quarantine themselves for a period of 14 days? How will that work, really, considering that these people will pass through a route to get to their homes and I mean, will they put their business on standstill? So, um, first, right now, you want to do everything possible to ensure that there's no outbreak. Um, I'm impressed with the massive and very, very robust response of the Chinese government back in Wuhan in China. And so you're not able to totally eliminate the risk, but you do everything you can to minimize uh, the possibility that somebody is going to transfer to another, another so person. So what has been um, presented so far mm -hmm. by the Ministry of Health, do you think that we've put in enough strategies in place um, to avert it or possibly contain it like uh, the news story said? Well. Uh, bear in mind that right now we're dealing with Lassa fever as well. So the Nigeria Center for Disease Control uh, has uh, plenty on its plate to deal with, but uh, incidentally, I'm in touch with the NCDC, Nigeria Center for Disease Control representatives. Uh, we, had, uh, we listened to their briefing last Tuesday. Uh, we know most likely there'll be another briefing, an update today, and we think they're making an effort, but um, what I can tell you also is that in 2014, when there was the Ebola outbreak, uh, the response at this stage of the outbreak was uh, a lot more robust than what we have today. But we expect them to pick up and uh, move very rapidly. Okay, um, in terms of the level of uh, preparedness, I wanted us to look at, um, we are having a conversation earlier, and you talked about the comparison between the coronavirus and the seasonal flu that comes in the US. How does that connect? So yeah, so I wanted to make that comparison because uh, people talking about how many people have died of the seasonal flu in the United States this flu season. And actually that number is high, about 10,000 people, 10,000 have actually died this seasonal flu season. And, um, but that's also because 19 to 20 million people have been infected. So if you work the math, it's 0 0.05 case fatality rate. Okay, uh, that means out of 100 people, 0.05% will die. Now, with what's going on with coronavirus, um, out of 100 people, two are likely to die. So if 20 million people get infected, multiply that number by 40. So the coronavirus is 40 times more fatal than the seasonal flu. So imagine what could happen if it were to spread as wide as the seasonal flu, which is why every effort should be made to contain its spread. 
Okay, uh, why we try to be cautious, what do you recommend as practical safety measures to keep in place uh, by individuals and collectively? Personal hygiene. It's so important. People usually underrate or, um, you know, people do not realize how important it is, how healthier we could all be if we paid a little more attention to personal hygiene. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Um, if you have to sneeze, protect other people, use a handkerchief or tissue, something you could throw away or sneeze into the crooked elbow or something. Uh, and then keep your, wipe the surfaces. Uh, if you touch a surface, I'm not saying that people should uh, develop OCD yes. all of a sudden, <laughs> right? Yeah, but let's pay more attention to personal hygiene and event that uh, we, we have an outbreak somewhere in the neighborhood, then we probably should at that time, begin to tell people to avoid crowded places. Uh, avoid, go to the hospital only if it's absolutely necessary. Uh, call your doctor on the phone, uh, get um, consultation by phone if you have to. Um, so basically it's about hygiene, it's about avoiding crowded places and we should be fine. I hope we will be fine. We will be fine. Thank you very much right. for coming on the news. Thank you, Felicity.